the funny thing with Loki is he wants to, to uh, let everybody know of his great high status. Mm. And um, there's nothing like, I mean, status for comedy, really. Mm -hmm. It's anyone who thinks they're important. Mm -hmm. It's like Ricky Gervais, it's yeah, all exactly. of the things, the opposite. <laughs> exactly. It's like, you're not important. So if you pump up the hubris, uh -huh. then humiliation can follow, mm -hmm. and then it's hopefully funny. And then it's funny. funny. Hi, Lily. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> um, no, we have already met, haven't we? It's yes. Thing. This is our first conversation. Mm, um, very exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. Why don't I start? Is that well, okay? Now I, now I want to <laughs> no, we, were, we were already talking about Essex Serpent. I got to watch it, and it's yeah. so brilliant, and you're so incredible in it. Mrs. Seaborn. Yeah, Cora. <laughs> I, uh... I never thought a country vicar would be so well read. Oh. What a shocking lack of imagination. I kind of want to know about that first meeting with, with Claire Danes, like what that was like to film. Well, she's playing Cora Seaborn. Mm. She's the heroine of the story. She's a widow on the other side of grieving the loss of her first husband. It was a very unhappy and abusive marriage, and mm. she's now free, and she's into Charles Darwin and Charles mm. Lyell, and she's out on the Essex coast where there's been an earthquake. And she's digging around for fossils and has this keen interest in the natural sciences. Mm. And she runs into this very um, faithful and God-fearing community. And I play the, the pastor, reverend. the reverend, somehow. Um, <laughs> and, um, but they have this very unusual meeting where they don't recognize each other mm. and they don't know the other person. So it was an interesting meeting. Watching it, the kind of the landscape, there's so much brutality and it's so beautiful and atmospheric and dark and and it's Cleo Bernard who's incredible. Yes, she yeah. captures like that truthful, harsh reality. Yes, and she's amazing. What was it that drew you to that role next? You know, I think it was um, partly Cleo. I met her years ago, actually, at um, in the way that you do. You know, you mm. probably I met her. We were both had films at the London Film Festival mm. in two thousand and eight, maybe two thousand and nine. I'm I'm trying to remember when it was. I'd seen her film and I really liked her and, and we had a really interesting conversation and I followed her work and I read this and I, it seemed so interesting. It was dealing with themes I thought were really resonant, mm -hmm. dealing with uncertainty mm -hmm. and anxiety. What happens to collective anxiety is it can, mm. it can start to sort of distort reality and your imagination, if you mm. don't have all the answers, rushes in to fill the void. And right. War at the time between... Um, science yeah. and faith mm -hmm. as a way of trying to explain life and find meaning in it. Mm. And it seemed very romantic in a, in a way, mm. in, a, in a, old, quite an old fashioned way, mm. and yet really earthbound and really of the land. Mm. Well, it's an allegory. The serpent is really the devil. There is no serpent in Essex. Do you actively choose stuff like, you know, obviously there's so much that you just were drawn to and wanted to explore, but, you know, obviously it's very different from low-key. Is that a purposeful choice you make? I mean, it was... Couldn't be more different. Yeah, it couldn't be more different. <laughs> um, I read it towards the end of Making Loki, and then we had like a week left, and and there was a, a Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving weekend, everybody went home, and mm. we had a week left, and I read it that weekend, and. I found the argument really interesting. Mm, I did, of, watching it, yeah. This, this thing of how do we find meaning in our mm. lives? Like, what do we put at the center of, mm. of how we find meaning? And these characters are all struggling because it's mm. a time of such enormous change. Because, yes, the age of reason is coming and a world organized around religion, that's going to diminish. The idea of a mythical beast that's hiding in submerged in the water. I mean, you kind of, it's very psychological. Mm. So it's kind of about the unknown. The Essex serpent is mm. the unknown. Mm. And we fear what we don't yeah, understand. Yeah, wow. And so every character has something, I think, that maybe psychologically is unknown. Mm. And they're trying to get to grips with that through the course of the story. And I love mm. making it. 
and it, we were out on the marshes in Essex. <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah. so, so brutal. Yeah, and it was nice so to be outside. So beautiful, beautiful though. I think I find it so in, when you're somewhere real and you're really out there in the kind of real landscape and even if you're freezing cold and like... <laughs> you sort of, you put up with it, you know? Yeah, you kind of yeah, like, it kind of helps. Yeah, the sky is out there. That's where like the, I realised all these painters had gone out there and there's something about the east facing sunsets mm. and the skies are extraordinary mm. so if you happen to catch yourself you're doing a scene outside and mm. suddenly it gets about 4 30 5 o'clock and the sky just does something you think oh this is why we came to Essex yeah yeah did you know Claire before or was it just like I did didn't you? yeah and we had a really really mm. good time we made it during the third I'm trying to get this right the, th the third lockdown we were in our little bubble, as I'm sure every, you know, everybody's mm. been in the bubble. and Which we kind of always do anyway, don't yeah. we? When you're filming, you kind of like, I find I don't see or like talk to anyone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I can get away with that at the moment because I don't have kids and the whole thing, but you, you, you sort of end up bubbling. You just get in the bubble, yeah. 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 It was so muddy. Mm. I think one of our location scouts ended up losing losing his wellies. His legs. <laughs> <laughs> losing his legs. Just never got out of the mud. Seven, seven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was so. I mean, it sounds. It was was so muddy. It was almost comical how muddy it was sometimes. <laughs> I see you, mother. What are you doing? I see you. Yeah, get the <gasps> out of here, Stockarazzi piece of shit. Do you want to get sued? Come on. Who should be down. suing him for invasion of privacy? From the Essex marshes <laughs> to sunny Southern <laughs> California, California. <laughs> how was Pam and Tommy? How did it, how did it come into you, to your life? It um, was really um, random. This was a really out of the blue phone call, and my impulse to do it was really immediate. I don't know how you are about knowing what's the right thing to do or not to do. Sometimes it just, you just know, right? Yeah. You just go, and that really appeals. Yeah. And other times it's this tortured, I actually kind of, <laughs> well, I'll ask you that in a second. Yeah. I find that the hardest thing is like knowing when to plunge and take the leap. Yeah. And with this, it was this impulse to really transform and do something completely different and take on something that I was so intimidated by and really didn't know if I could sort of take on another person's skin and and I really cared about, you know, what it the issues and the bigger picture of what we were exploring. Of course, yeah, yeah. You know, about privacy and the violation of the media and how yeah. dangerous they can be when they mm. take on a narrative or decide to tear someone down or decide to sort of reduce someone and so amazing people involved like Craig Gillespie directed yeah. the first few and S Sebastian Stan who plays Tommy Lee and when the project came to you it was going to be Craig and it was going to be Sebastian Stan and it was all a collected actually you know what it was so early it was like right. writer's room I wow. really don't know why they th well one of the writers said that the reason that they thought of me was because it was playing Pamela Anderson much earlier. Mm. I mean, she grew up in a very small town in Canada with yeah. like very few people on Vancouver Island. And I related to a sort of a sense of the newness of this whole thing yeah. and, and then how quickly things can change and you can become more cynical or corrupted mm. or whatever it may mm. be. And Your work was extraordinary. Oh, I mean, thanks, just Tom. unrecognizable mm -hmm. in it, certainly in comparison the physical transformation and mm. the vocal transformation and it's sort of you know taking on a a real person is uh, i know such a mm. it feels like such an yeah, enormous because you've done responsibility it too. it's yeah it's terrifying yeah. isn't it when you look at other people's careers who do you look to yeah that's a good question um i guess i would have to say <sighs> jane fonda you want to honor and respect. Right, and, and be a good custodian, look yeah. out and be respectful. I yeah. felt like if I came at it with heart and with like total sort of understanding and, and desire only to be honest and to take care of the story and mm. what happened as much as possible, that was all I could really do. But it was, yeah. I don't know if I'd do it again anytime soon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you, when you, because you, when you played Hank Williams, right? A long time ago. Long yeah. time ago. He died when he was 29. He's a link in a chain, really, of music. That, yeah, you know, right. People like Bob Dylan and Leonard Cohen, and they're all like, we're only doing this because Hank was doing it. So I'm like, oh, I didn't okay. Know that. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> but um, it can fuel you that, that sort of, I felt like that desire to do her justice and to really um, morph was so frightening that I never worked harder, yeah, you right, know? Yeah, of course, you could tell. And I thought, because the show, I suppose it opens with their connectedness and their passion and their 
connection to each other. And mm -hmm. there's a really interesting idea that I think the whole show explores, and particularly through your performance, which is the complexity of what it means to be a public person. Mm. And when a persona is almost created on your behalf right. and you don't have any possession over it, mm. and, and that can then be manipulated and distorted. And mm. the scene where Pamela's prepared, that is it episode three? Mm. Pamela's prepared that big speech and mm. for um, to do the next day and she's mm. gonna nail it and you nail it as her nailing it. <laughs> and then you turn up on set and the producers say, we thought it was stronger, wordless. wordless. Yeah. They cut my monologue. What? Yes. They said it was, um, they said it was stronger, wordless. God, Wait. anyway, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. It happens all the time. This um, is so good. That eat? was your big scene. Oh, I know. I thought that really showed the, there's this perceived potency mm. that she has, but also mm. vulnerability. And, and then the wrestling about coming back the next day saying, I think we should. I think we're going to we do it. Choose and to go beyond people's perceptions and to like, that's not okay and that's not enough. It was really bad at, in that time with a lot of these women, their stories you're sort of revisiting of like, you know, they did this show with Monica Lewinsky and how we collectively treated women in, mm. in, you know, in the past, but still today, these sort of double standards. I still feel that's difficult, you know, it's still hard sometimes to go against what people assume of you, whether that even be like yeah. in work or in the press and the perception that, mm. I sure. don't know. It's yeah, hard yeah. to ignore it all sometimes and yeah. push through it all. And I don't know how you. <laughs> yeah. Where do you begin with becoming Pamela Anderson in terms of the physical transformation? I'm sure you had amazing teams, hair, mm. makeup, wardrobe. Yeah, um, God, the best, like the best, you yeah. know, that you could never, ever do your job without them. I mean, initially I started training because I just had like pictures of Pamela everywhere around me. And I, I actually lost like 20 pounds, which is crazy, but she, cause I wanted to be athletic. I wanted to mm. be so strong as opposed yeah. to just like drop weight. And then I, yeah, had these prosthetic booze, <laughs> forehead, right. yeah. uh, all this. It took four hours every wow. day. And during that time I would just sort of sit, I had like a montage of all her like interviews from the nineties. And I would just start tuning in to her voice and her sort of like almost learn it like a song, like the pitch and the rhythm. She speaks really, really, really fast. And then I would like her hair mm. and her hands and just, I just like watched her so much and stayed in her kind of like the whole time. Wow. Um, How long was the shoot? I think it was four, four months or Goodness. five months. But you're I- you're still doing all the training Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. I didn't stay like, in character, but I didn't speak English for the entire five months, even at home. Really? <laughs> because it was, I just, just thought if I slip up once, and now I do yeah. that awful thing where someone's talking American and I start going, I start like talking. You start and it's talking like, American. Yeah. <laughs> it's so. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's, lots of actors do that. Mm. And it's, it's sort of, it's easier, isn't it? It mm. feels, um, it just feels you almost like you've played an establishing chord mm. at the beginning of the day. And you just want to stay in the chord. Yes, you wanna, exactly. You don't want to be in some other tune, you know. Right. Um, and I find and it hard to... be caught out asking for a, you know, mm -hmm. can I have a sandwich or yeah, something? Yeah, I'm know. going to the loop. Yeah. Oh no, the bathroom, no, yeah, the yeah. restroom. Yeah, 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 exactly, <laughs> yeah, wow. I can relate to that. Yeah. So did you think that people on, on the crew, did they ever get to know Lily James really, or were they just... I don't think so. And nor with Sebastian, with Sebastian Stan, he was Tommy. We, yeah. we really didn't get to know each other till we started doing press. Wow. Um, at all. Like we, it was sort of like, oh, it was kind of almost awkward. And also because we were just earlier talking about bubbles and COVID, when we shot that, it was the same thing. So, and the days were so long, like 18 hours. And so I find that the Americans are worse for the long days than right. us, <laughs> us right. more respectable. Right. You mean this just going Long going the long. days, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. I found that so hard. It was like, but I guess it was because of the prosthetic. How has it's that been with you? you as a little thing and with Taloki of like, you don't have any prosthetic, but it was probably long days, but getting in the hole the whole thing of being Yeah, I him. mean, Loki's changed so much over mm. the years for me. It's been, mm. He's been that, like, it's, it's I, been I such love a long playing experience him, a huge playing journey. Him. Yeah. What's that like? It is, it's amazing. I mean, I, I was cast when I was 29, I'm 41. Credit um, to you for having, like, let him emerge and grow and shift. And, well, and to everybody yeah. at Marvel for letting me do it and, and the audience, actually, who, mm. who I'm sure if they stopped being interested would let me know. Initially, 
you know, had so many different iterations with Loki and the costumes were so elaborate and I was wearing a wig and we were shooting in the summer in New Mexico and Cleveland. I was always trying to break out of the mask, mm. of, of, of so let something honest come through. Totally, I had that with Pamela um, all the time. Right. You build the character, you build the exterior, and then you have to express something through the mask mm -hmm. in a way. It's, I suppose that's mm -hmm. what hair and makeup mm -hmm. is. It's a mask of something. Mm. And by the time we got to the, the series of um, on Disney+, Plus, what's great about it was Loki's like, stripped of all, right. all the things that are familiar. Immediately yeah. he's literally stripped of his clothes. Uh -huh. And put in a jumpsuit and then other clothes and his status is gone and he's mm -hmm. nowhere near Thor or Odin or Asgard, all these things. And um, I wanted to, one of my big things going, it was like, I'm gonna grow my hair and I'm gonna dye it. It's just gonna be Strip it all as away. natural as it can be mm -hmm. so I can spend all my time investigating the interiority, you know, you know rather than worrying, just saying, I think everyone knows who the character mm -hmm. is now and, and also let's Let's open go him up deep. and go deep and find new aspects of him and challenge the character to change mm. and grow. And so it was really, I loved it. It was really fun. And you are so, it's like amazing how funny, <laughs> first of all, you're so funny. <laughs> and then also it's like deeply vulnerable. Yeah. Which is, and so moving. That's, which is, the, that's the cocktail with him. Yeah. That's the weird. Um, so impressive. Well, it, it's a writing thing and mm. a massive tip. Of, it's such an ancient character. You know, he's the god of mischief. So, mm -hmm. like, I remember looking it up ages ago in the dictionary, and, and it said inclination to playfulness. Mm. And I was like, that's an actor. That's an actor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, that's what you've got to do is play. Like, yeah. always make sure there's a there's a, a strain of a playfulness thing. in there. The funny thing with Loki is he wants to to uh, let everybody know of his great high status, mm. and um, there's nothing like. I mean status for comedy really. Mm -hmm. It's anyone who thinks they're important. Mm -hmm. It's like Ricky Gervais, there's yeah, all exactly. the things the offense exactly. <laughs> It's like, you're not important. So if you pump up the hubris, uh -huh. then humiliation can follow mm -hmm. and then it's hopefully And then it's funny. funny. But you sort of play it with a straight bat. Mm. Especially in the show, because you know he does this thing in Avengers Endgame, picks up the cube and mm -hmm. disappears. <laughs> He's essentially broken the rules of reality which is he's done something he's not supposed to do. So he's arrested and apprehended by this organization, the TVA, who right. like exist outside of time. And um, they make sure that reality unfolds according to predetermined mm -hmm. So sequences. everything's des predestined. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Um, and Loki's the god of chaos. So he's like, it's order versus chaos. And immediately the, he's just constantly being humbled mm. and brought down to size. And so there's this richness for kind of for everything in there, for drama, for comedy, for mm. vulnerability. So it's a, a great conceit and even um, more enjoyable maybe from doing the movies or all this all sort of different longer. Yeah. D I longer. like doing a TV show because yeah. you get so much longer to be yeah. in the character yeah, yeah, and to yeah. like let more it time. unfold. More time. The first director with Loki was with Ken Branagh. Yes, we, we share both this. Yes, with. yeah, yeah. We kind thing. of share this like life-changing moment. Yeah, we both received a phone call from Kenneth, Kenneth Branagh, Branagh, and it's changed everything. Yeah, and I wondered how much he was a part of because for me, when I did Cinderella with him, there was a huge journey of collaboration. And he was like, I want to know how she does. She sleep with the blind shut? Does she, you know, yeah. what she eat first thing in the morning? And I wondered if you'd. You know, he's amazing. Like developed that, that yes. with him. Yeah, it's um, it's such a testament to his generosity as a director as well, mm. that he just understands actors and understands that the, if you can find connection points that are that are internal that mm -hmm. may never be known about, everything you do will have a ring of truth, authentic and truth to it. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, for before the first film and to back in two thousand nine, Chris Hemsworth and and. Anthony Hopkins and Rene Rousseau and I would sit around a table and sort of delineate this little family drama and mm. um, talk about, you know, Thor and Loki's childhood and mm. all these things that became baked into the relationships that maybe weren't expressed in the story, but you could feel between us all mm -hmm. as actors, which is really, you know, that's a that's a real director. Yeah, I was reading about this, which is so exciting, which is Loki is the first queer character, Marvel character. How do I say <laughs> I <think laughs> In I, the MC, is it MCU, MCU. universe? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna get that right, because it's very important. No, no, it's yeah, yeah. the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, yeah. and 
Uh, yeah, I, I can't. I, I can't believe that's. I'm amazed if that's true. Um, it may be that. It's, it may be that in the in the in the in films the in the sto film stories it might be true, but you know, back from my early days of researching the character in the ancient myths, the identity of Loki was fluid in every aspect, mm. in gender, in sexuality. It's a uh, something a very ancient part of the character. I thought about it; it hadn't emerged in the stories we've told, um, and. I was really pleased and privileged, actually, mm. that, it, that it came up in the, in the series. It's a small step. It's not, you know, it's not as far as there's so much more to do. You know, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has to reflect the world we live right. in. It was an honor to, to, to bring that up. It was really important to me. It was really important to Kate Heron and Michael Waldron, and I'm pleased that we could bring it into our story. Yeah, and yeah. How, how incredible what an impact that can make on such a widely seen universe, mm. which becomes people's, like, religion, going yes. back to yeah, the yeah. seven, but, yeah. like, and for people to feel represented and Absolutely. to see themselves. Yes. It's, like, it's just so important. Yeah. Yeah.